Bob and Frank, things are changing at Behringer Harvard, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the evolution of the company leading up to those changes. So Bob, let's start with you. Maybe we could talk just a little bit about our history as a company and what do you see as changes on the horizon? Sure. Uh, thanks, Kelly. You know, it's, we're now 10 years uh, into our uh, life as Behringer Harvard. Uh, and as everybody knows, we've spent the first, you know, 80% of this uh, time focusing on the non-traded REIT business. Uh, we raised some of those funds um, that were r raised before the recession. And we, like everybody else who raised funds before the recession, uh, have battled as hard as we can to create as much value in those funds as we could. You know, one of the things you, I know you're very familiar with is the fact that to help our investors, one of the things we've done over the last number of years post the recession to help us get to uh, the recovery is we at Behringer Harvard have committed about $140 million of our own money into those funds to get them to a better day. At the same time, the post-recession funds have really done quite well. Obviously, both multifamily uh, and Opportunity Re2 have reported valuations that are really uh, quite exciting, and we're very, very pleased with those and think they will return um, really very well um, for the shareholders. You know, uh, but now we're at a, a point where I think uh, the business is changing. The investors' needs are evolving and we want to evolve with them. So we've started to look forward to new products and new structures that will allow us to adapt to a much more uh, broad-based alternative investment platform. If you think about the BDCs being introduced into the uh, independent broker-dealer channel, that was a real evolution away from strictly um, non-traded REITs. We're thinking, what can we do to help investors and their needs on a going forward basis. So our platform, I think you're going to see expanding over the next 10 years as opposed to where we were for the last 10. So discussing some of the evolution of investor needs, Frank, the next question is for you. You joined us not quite two years ago, and I remember in an earlier video discussion you mentioned that it was the entrepreneurial culture of the company that first attracted you to the firm. Can you talk about how you're harnessing that culture to help pivot the company strategy moving forward? Well, in, in order to adjust and change, you, you need an entrepreneurial culture. You know, people either are either going to just stay frozen and, and hope that the past keeps recreating itself, or you have entrepreneurs that disrupt businesses or are willing to change their own businesses, take advantage of opportunities. But in order to make that happen, there's, there's uh, one important attribute, and it's this commitment attribute. It's the idea that the firm invested heavily in the protection of its pre-generation business or, 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 or pre-crisis business, but it's not investing just as heavily. The same type of commitment on the business moving forward. And, and then the question becomes, well, what is that business? And it's a business made up of unique investment strategies partnered with best-in-class uh, advisors. It's addressing regulatory and, and consumer and investor and advisor concerns about the way alternative investments have been packaged. And, 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 and to take those overt, direct steps and what's required after that is people. You know, you have to hire people into the organization, upskill people who are at the organization to be able to articulate and to communicate and build an educational platform that can transfer that vision into the marketplace. And that's what's got me so excited about this coming decade because we can already see the feedback that, that advisors and investors are giving us, but it all starts and ends with the commitment and that entrepreneurial culture. And I think Bob has hit that right on the head. Well, as head of marketing, I know how important these video communications are to our audience. So I want to thank you both for your time today.